All right, everyone, welcome back. So we move into the Western Conference today in our playoff previews, looking at probably what might be the best series of the sec the Western Conference. Uh, so we have the Winnipeg Jets and the Colorado Avalanche today. So the two seed in the, in the Central and the three seed in the Central are facing off. And this is going to be a fun matchup. Um, honestly, I didn't expect this to happen at the beginning of the season. I kind of really didn't expect this. Um... In about a month ago, in fact, I actually thought that it was going to be Dallas and the Jets, but the Dallas Stars took off, Colorado struggled, and now the Jets are looking hot as well. So let's get into it here. So starting off with the Winnipeg Jets, who finished 52, 24, and 6 for 110 points. They are 27, 11, and 3 at home, and they're 25, 13, and 3 on the road. So overall, Winnipeg's been really impressive this year. I don't think a lot of people had the Jets making the playoffs or even coming close to the playoffs. I thought with a lot of people, what a lot what they thought was that they were going to trade Shifley, they were going to trade Hellebuck, and that was it. This team was going to be done with. They were going to tear this down and start rebuilding. That was definitely not the case that happened. Definitely not. So they re-signed Hellebuck. They re-signed Shifley. They bring in some other names. The, the Dubois deal looks really good for them now with a lot of those young guys playing really well. And now they have a really good team. So they have scored 259 goals, 11 199, which is qualifiable for the William M. Jennings Trophy. Uh, they have a 19 point percent on the power play, which is 22nd, and they have a 77.2 penalty kill percentage, which is 21st. So the special teams are not great. They are not. They're not great whatsoever. Um, they are actually pretty middling. It's kind of weird to think because you'd think with a team with as good of a core, as good as a you know, a, a good top six as they have, you would think that the power play would be decent. It's, it's not that great. Um, that could be what kills them in this series, though, because when we look at Colorado, they actually have really good special teams. So that's something that could play a factor there, too. However, what Colorado definitely does not have is a really good goalie in Connor Hellebuck, who we'll get into in a second here. So when you look at the Avalanche, the Avalanche currently stand at 49, 25, and 7 for 105 points. They went 39 and 1 at home, and they are 19, 16, and 6 on the road. So Colorado has um, not been able to get over that first round hump. They lost in the first round last year since winning the Stanley Cup. That was a brutal series, and I kind of feel like they look a little worse this year. In my opinion, they kind of look a little bit worse. Uh, so they've scored 299 goals, led in 253. They have a 24.5 power play percentage, which is fifth, and they have an 80.2 penalty kill percentage, which is 12th. So as I mentioned, um, definitely I'm taking Colorado when it comes to special teams. Their power play is insane with McKinnon, McCarr, um, Rontanen, Nachushkin. There's plenty of names on there uh, who make it great, and obviously too bringing in some of the new guys they brought in has made it great as well. But my concern is the goaltending. That's a huge concern for me. Um, and I will get into that a little bit later in this video, but that's a massive concern for me. Now, they're really good at home, Nathan McKinnon especially. Um, they are hard to beat in Ball Arena. On the road, the road record isn't bad, but it's not great either. So it's pretty subpar. Um, but yeah, Colorado and Winnipeg all combining together should be a great matchup. Uh, so when you look at the individual numbers, you got Mark Shifley for the Winnipeg Jets. Shifley was 74 games played, 25 goals, 47 assists for 72 points. And on the opposing end, you have Nathan McKinnon of the Colorado Avalanche with 82 games played, 51 goals, 88 assists for 140 points. So McKinnon's having a really good year as well, um, putting up a really good pace, could win the Hart Trophy this year, has been insanely valuable to the Avalanche, like insanely. Um, I honestly think you take McKinnon off this team, this team might be a fringe playoff team. That's a take that a lot of people might not like. And then Shifley too has been great this year, but again, not scoring a whole lot of points does not mean he's been playing bad, just the production in when it comes to points has been not as good as McKinnon. And when you're compared to McKinnon, obviously that's... That's something you can't overcome. Uh, so your second in scoring guy for the Jets is Josh Morrissey. Morrissey with 81 games played, 10 goals, 59 assists for 69 points. And then you got Migo Rotten on the other side for Colorado with 80 games played, 42 goals, 62 assists for 103 points. 
I believe Rontanen has been a awesome forward this year for Colorado. Not as good as last year. I think last year really kind of McKinnon was out for a lot of the year. So therefore he kind of carried a little bit in Colorado. Uh, this year he's had a down seat, not like a down season, but hasn't had as high of a production as he had in previous years, but still a good year. And then Morrissey should get Norris consideration. He probably won't because that's just how it is, unfortunately. Um, but Morrissey, definitely a great defenseman has been a, big factor offensively and defensively in what Winnipeg has done this season. When you look at third and scoring, you got Kyle Connor. Connor's scoring has been down, but he's still a great player. Uh, 65 games played, 34 goals, 27 assists, 61 points. And then for the other side, you got Kale McCarr of the Avalanche with 76 games played, 21 goals, 68 assists for 89 points. So when you look at the overall numbers, uh, Connor has definitely been down in scoring, but then again, when you miss 20 games, of course you're only going to get 34 goals. So I'm not all too keen on that. I do think though, if you're looking for a really clutch goal, Connor could be their guy in the playoffs. So definitely there. I'm looking out for him. And then Makar, great defenseman, arguably the best one in the league. Um, is going to be probably in that final two with Quinn Hughes to win the Norris Trophy. That's what the expectation is, at least. So we'll see there if Kel McCarr can do it this year. Uh, fourth in scoring, got Nikolai Ehlers. Ehlers with, with 82 games played, 25 goals, 36 assists for 61 points. And then for the other side, you got Jonathan Druin of the Avalanche. Druin with 78 games played, 19 goals, 37 assists for 56 points. So Ehlers, a look at him. He's been a great top six forward, arguably one of the more underrated players on this Jets team and kind of in the NHL too. I don't see a whole lot of people talking about Ehlers. Uh, and then Druin. Druin has definitely redeemed himself, but then again, he is playing with McKinnon. Um, a pretty solid 60-point season, more or less. So not terrible there from him. He isn't see I haven't seen these numbers from Druin in a very long time. I remember there was a streak in Montreal where he didn't score for a long-ass time. So this is crazy to see uh, Druin putting up numbers this solid. And finally, fifth in scoring, you have Sean Monahan. ironically, a deadline acquisition. He actually played 83 games this season, has 26 goals, 33 assists for 59 points. And then Casey Middlestad of um, Colorado with 79 games played, 18 goals, 38 assists for 56 points. Ironically, those two are also dead on, deadline acquisitions, so it makes for a pretty good parallel there. So looking at Monahan, Monahan is a good First line center is very, or not first line center, second line center, who is going to do a lot on this Jets core. Um, the Jets wanted a secondary score and some depth down the middle, and Monaghan really helped them out with that. So we'll see there what he does. And then middle side, kind of the same thing, a great second line center for Colorado, essentially. Again, with Landis Cobb being out the last couple of years, it's kind of weakened their center depth. So getting a guy like Middlestat to come in and play some good top six or middle six minutes, it's good there for Colorado for sure. And he can score some clutch goals. So I'm looking forward to that. So in terms of deadline players, and I've kind of already looked at them with the leading scorers and stuff, but Tyler Toffoli for the Jets. Toffoli's been a guy who can definitely score some good secondary scoring. Um, has been an, obviously a really clutch playoff player in previous years. Um, he just has not seen playoffs in a little bit. So hopefully Toffoli will be able to do some good. Uh, for the Jets in the playoffs. And then a good defensive defenseman in Colin Miller. Might play, might not. It depends. He might get swapped out of either game. It's going to be a pretty interesting rotation to see. And then for the other side, I got Sean Walker uh, for Colorado. A good, you know, top four defenseman. Um, was a guy I saw in Philadelphia in person a few times this season. Uh, is a good defensive defender. And is kind of a guy that, a, that Colorado kind of does need. So looking at other players, I want to give a shout out to here. You got Cole Perfetti. Perfetti. Um, struggled a little bit this year with ice time, but really kind of redeemed himself towards the end. Gabriel Velarde missed a lot of time with injury, but I think he should be recognized for what has gone on. And then I actually forgot him on my list, but Adam Lowry, the captain of this team, a great third line center, um, an awesome defensive player. If his offense was a little bit better, he could be a Selkie nominee. Just saying. Um, but yeah, I think those are the guys that I'm looking out for if I'm the Avalanche. And if I'm looking out for guys, if I'm the Jets, I'm looking out for Nachushkin for sure. Nachushkin's been in and, out of the, in and out of the lineup this year with a lot of things that have gone on personally for him. Um, but I think when he's in, he will be awesome. Uh, Devon Tays as well, a great pairing guy with uh, Kale McCarr, great defensively. And then Ross Colton is a pretty solid middle six forward there who can provide some secondary scoring and has won a Stanley Cup before. So that is something that you got to keep in mind there too. Uh, a look at goalies. So goalies, as I mentioned, I was going to get into this. It's interesting. It, it is very interesting 
when you look at these goalies. You got Connor Hellebuck here for the Jets. Hellebuck with a 37-19-4 record, a 2.39 goals against average, and a .921 save percentage. His backup is Laurent Brassois. So, Hellebuck won the Jettings Trophy this year. There's a very good chance he wins the Vezina Trophy this year. I think he's, without a doubt, the best goalie in the NHL currently. So, that's what Colorado has up against them. And, and if, if Colorado's going to win this series, they need to beat Hellebuck. They do. Um, and I think if the Jets are going to win this series, Hellebuck is going to need to play a big factor while they shut down those guys like McKinnon and Rontanen and the Chushkin and other players on this team. As for Colorado, it's it, something that I've mentioned before in videos, but I'm not confident in Colorado's goaltending. I'm not. I'm not that high in Colorado this year. So you got Georgiev uh, for the Avalanche with a 38-18-5 record, a 3.02 goals against average, and a .897 save percentage. Their backup is Justice and Noonan. So... As I've said in videos, I think Georgiev is an okay goalie. I think he's an okay goalie. Can he get them far in the playoffs? No. And I know people are going to bring up, they're going to bring up that Kemper wasn't a big name goalie with playoff experience. Kemper still was a solid goalie. He wasn't like, he, he wasn't a great goalie. Like he wasn't like Vasilevsky when they were playing them in the cup final two years ago, but he was still a good goalie. But Georgiev just has never proved himself in the playoffs, hasn't even proven himself in the regular season. And the only thing that Colorado can like argue him for is that he has the most wins out of any goalie this season. And that's not a, I don't think that's a, a stat that's measurable enough to determine how good a goalie is. And then if you think Georgiev's playing bad, do you want to put a Noonan in there? Do you want to put a, a rookie goaltender who's played like less than 20 games in his career? I just can't see it. So those are things that I think about for sure. The, the, the Colorado goaltending is concerning. Everything else in the team is pretty good. I like the defense. I like the, I like the offense. Um, as for Winnipeg, I like the goaltending. The defense, I think, is good enough. I don't hate it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't hate it. The offense, I think, is better than it's been in previous years uh, when this team's tried to make runs in other years. So that being said, I'm taking Winnipeg in seven. I think this is going to be a really close series, and I think it probably will come down to game seven. It's going to go either way, but. I'm leaning towards the Jets in seven. So let me know your prediction in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe down below. That would be greatly appreciated. So again, I apologize for not getting the rest of them up today. I know this is the last one for today. I'm going to get the other Western Conference previews up tomorrow. The original plan was actually that I, I get these out and then start streaming. Um, but I'm going to have to do these either tonight or tomorrow because I have work tonight. So it's unfortunate that I can't get the rest of them out. But yeah, I'll get the other three out tomorrow. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.